The relentless use of the very fine people myth speaks to a profound crisis in America's political dialogue. This false narrative not only twists the truth, but also deepens the divide, robbing the public of the chance to engage in genuine, informed decision-making. I ran for president in 2020 because of what I saw in Charlottesville in August of 2017. Extremists coming out of the woods, carrying torches, their veins bulging from their necks, carrying Nazi swastikas and chanting the same exact anti-Semitic bile that was heard in Germany in the early 30s. Neo-Nazis, white supremacists, and the Ku Klux Klan, so emboldened by a president then in the White House that they saw as an ally. They didn't even bother to wear their hoods. Hate was on the march in America. Old ghosts in new garments, stirring up the oldest divisions, stoking the oldest fears, giving oxygen to the oldest forces that they long sought to tear apart America. In the process, a young woman was killed. When I contacted her mother, I asked about what happened. She told me. When the president was asked what he thought had happened, Donald Trump said, and I quote, there are very fine people on both sides. My God. That's what he said. That is what he said and what he meant. Joe Biden's insistence on repeating this claim is a deliberate tactic to sway public opinion. By wielding this narrative, he taps into the raw wounds of racism and hatred that have scarred American history. It's an attempt to paint Donald Trump as a white supremacist, reducing a complex reality to a dangerously simplistic and false moral dichotomy. This manipulation shatters trust in our political conversations, perpetuating the fractures within our nation. Biden's dependence on these misleading stories isn't just misleading, it's cruel. It avoids the hard work of addressing nuanced issues, instead offering a distorted black and white portrayal of morality. This approach calls into question Biden's integrity as a leader and erodes the public's ability to make informed, autonomous choices. The ongoing repetition of this misinformation can embed it deeply into the collective consciousness, proving that if a lie is told often enough, it starts to feel like the truth. As a result, both sides of the political spectrum become even more entrenched in their views. This isn't just about a difference in opinion. It's a psychological trap where people cling to beliefs that align with their biases, ignoring any contradictory evidence. The public's reaction to Biden's use of this narrative will undoubtedly be split. His supporters may see it as proof of Trump's moral failings, while Trump's supporters will likely feel further alienated and distrustful of the media and political elite. This dynamic is tearing at the very fabric of American society, making it harder and harder for people to engage in meaningful conversations that transcend political divides.